We have talked about creating bidirectional composites and running the simulations with periodic boundary condition. There is no need to wonder anymore as this is what I will be doing in this video. I will show you how to create the representative volume element of a bidirectional composite, attaching a periodic boundary condition to it and run simulations that lead to such results as these. Let us sit back and relax as we get started with this modeling. Hello, welcome to CM Videos. My name is Dr. Michael Okreke. This is a YouTube channel where we try to help you create effective computational modeling solutions to whatever computational problem that you're dealing with. So the outline basically starts off with creating a virtual domain um, of this bidirectional composite. How is it designed? And then I'll talk about the setting up of the model within Abacus, the different steps that we need to do to take this, we we'll analyze the simulation, and then at the end, we we'll also show the stress strain graphs and effective properties. So the virtual domain that I'm going to use is something that looks like this. So basically, it's a 2D system. I'm going to walk into this system. So currently, we're going to look at the length and a width of about 225 microns. The fiber diameter will be 15 micron in diameter and a volume fraction of 40%. So let's look more closely on this. So the stacking sequence for this system that we're looking at here will be a 0, 90 and a 0 degree stacking sequence. So something that looks like this. So if we split it apart, so that means the first lamina here, the one at the top here, would have a height of 75 microns in, in, in height and also a width of 225 and it will be the 0 degree lamina. Then we also have a 90 degree lamina and then finally we also have a 0 degree lamina. So they are all randomly distributed fiber arrangements. If this is the kind of content that you like, please, I do encourage you to subscribe to this YouTube channel. So when contents like this are made, you'll be the first to see it. I also want to highlight that there is a CM videos inside that group, which I say regularly send every week. Newsletters talk about behind the scene in, in CM videos and more about products that are available on CM videos and also offer my perspective on a lot of computational modeling issues. If you're interested in these kind of things, please do subscribe to this uh, CM videos inside that group. So let's more, look more closely on how you would actually design these different laminates. So the first of them here is the zero degree laminate, one right at the top. So if we isolate just the laminate alone, what you'll find is that it will have a length of 2 to 5 microns and a height of 75 microns as stated here. If we look more closely, what would the fiber be? What would the configuration of the fiber? Remember, we're looking at the fiber from the side here. So it's essentially a long length of fiber like that with a height of 50 microns which is basically the diameter of the fiber. So looking at it from the side, it will be a diameter of the fiber in a circular form. So 50 microns and we're going to have to calculate which volume fraction you get based on just the fiber distribution in this view, in that view, for a simulation to work in this 2D RVE. So, and the formula we're going to work with is the volume fraction for this lamina would be the number of fiber times the length of the fiber times the width of the fiber, which is basically here. So you want to see what volume fraction the fiber covers in this window of view. This is because we are doing this in 2D. If you're doing this in 3D, then it, you know you wouldn't have to worry about this. So when you do all your calculations for the volume fraction of 40% that we're working with, essentially for us to achieve a 40% volume fraction, we need two fibers in this window. So in this case here, we've got one fiber there and I've got another fiber here, which had to be replicated periodically on the other side to create the two fiber required. And we'll show this when we start modeling. Okay, so for the 90 degree lamina, so this is a different kind of thing will work. So here we're looking at the fiber now through the, the true thickness direction and we see the fiber in the way it's randomly distributed in this window. So we'll follow the normal calculation that we use for calculating the volume fraction. And in this window, we need to have up to 38 fibers in order to achieve a 48, 40% volume fraction. And the RV here will be created using a software that I've developed called Monte Carlo Gen 2D for random distribution of fibers. Again, if you want to learn a little bit more about this software and how it works and how to get hold of it, please look at the video at the top. Also, in the description section of this video, you will find the, soft, the link for getting hold of this software. The material properties that we're going to be using for this would be obviously these properties for polypropylene and the fiber will be an A-class fiber. So we talked about the fact that we want to use periodic boundary condition to run this simulation. So what does that mean? So again, this is our RVE that we are going to ultimately use. So we're going to 
impose a periodic boundary condition like this with it so that hopefully at the end you should have periodicity of the formation shown in this way so the corner nodes here the one two three are the nodes that we can use to impose our boundary conditions and the load here it's for creating unique axis deformation in the x-axis so this is what we will need to do so to implement the periodic boundary condition again we'll be using another code that i developed which is called bbc gen 2d you know version one so if you want to learn a bit more again about this code look in the cards you'll see um, a video where i explain how this code works also in the description section of this video there will be details of how you can get hold of this code so the case studies that we're going to study to investigate this a little bit more first will be a tensile deformation along the x-axis according to this reference frame that we're using so this will be the kind of loading history that we're going to use we need one two three the three corner nodes pinned or connected in this way and a displacement in this axis then we'll also look at the y-axis deformation then we pin the three corner nodes and then we'll displaced in the y-axis then the final case will be a pure shear deformation on the xy plane and how that would work would be we we'll pin one corner here and then we we'll apply displacement in the x and y direction at those corner points the question of the day what application areas do you actually think this modeling approach can be used so just let me know in the comment section what application you think all these principles i'm discussing where would it be used so we're not going to go into abacus and begin this modeling so to begin this modeling the first thing we need to do is to consider uh, the random distribution the 90 degree fiber laminate the random distribution and i did say that we're going to use monte carlo gen to do this so this is what the software looks like so when you download the software you have a file that has mainly this and that there could be some other files in it but these are the key ones the control deck file and the main executable here so if you drag this and open this within matlab so this is the matlab that we're going to use to operate on this so what we want here is to specify the parameters that we want in order to execute this so if you think about what we agreed so for this system it will have a 225 as the length and the width will be 75 for that region so this is just a 90 degree lamina the diameter of the fiber is 15 and the volume fraction is 40 okay so now because it's not going to be right at the origin it's not going to start it's in the second position so we are going to position it 75 micro units up 75 micro units up as is shown here so it's basically the second fiber uh, lamina in the arrangement then obviously it's going to be a glass fiber it's going to be polypropylene and it's going to be a composite so we could actually call it maybe lamina 90 degree and the periodicity so this is about whether you want the fiber to appear in the edges and then there will be periodic or not for this case we're going to set it to one we just don't want the fiber appearing on the edges because it's a lamina we don't want it encroaching into another lamina system so we're going to set that to be one and other parameters remain there are. again if you want to learn a bit more about this particular code and how it's used look at the card for information of how this actually works so once we finish doing that so we're going to save it and then we'll run that code so i'm going to call monte Carlo gen 2d so and then you just run it and then see so what it will do is that it will look at the different inclusions and then print all the 38 inclusions that we need show the files that generates from it so basically it's finishing the printing and that's the simulation result that we generate for monte Carlo gen randomly distributing so we get you know a little bit of information so just approximately 40 percent of fiber volume fraction like we set out the diameter of the inclusion is 15 and this is the distribution the white circles are the fibers and the black regions are the metrics we actually to start somewhere around 75 so up to 150 because it's the second lamina and the whole length of the system is 225 so we're going to close that and then we'll look inside here so there is a file that is created so we we'll look at there so there's a file that is created and then also there is a python script that is created so if you open this as text in here so it gives us more information about the type python script that this code has written for us to use in creating this model so what i'm going to do is that i'm going to copy ctrl c to copy all of it ctrl a to select or ctrl c to copy and then i'm going to minimize that and then go to abacus so here is an abacus where we're going to bring in this model all we need to do is to paste it so it will run through and it will generate the code the way we want it so basically that's the fiber system and the way it is generated and if we open it so we can see our lamina 90 degree is already created there 
and it's in the right position as we will need so this this is fine so what we're going to then do is let's try and work with the other cases so i'm going to rename this i'm going to call it my lamina zero zero degree the number a which is the best the first one on the list so what we're going to do here is to create the parts so let's create the matrix part of it so it's going to be a 2d system the formable so maybe 500 so start from here so we're starting from 0 0 and then we're getting on to 225 and 75 so this gives us the matrix system so we'll, we'll stop with that oh no let's create the fiber so we'll create the fiber we're following the same argument so this will be a 0 0 and 225 but we know the fiber wanted to be 50 micron in height okay so that's the fiber so we've got the two so if we go to the assembly module we can bring the two together okay so this is fine so what we want is to distribute this fiber in that window so i'm going to create another fiber so if i double click on the instance i can create a second fiber so that in the window here we have two fibers um, captured so we're going to then have to translate this particular fiber so let's look at the first one which is fiber one so maybe we can translate it from this middle position to there if we want okay so this is fine so what i want to do is i want to put another one somewhere up here so and then i can create an intersection between here and there so that that could be there so with this point i'm going to move the other fiber to that location so i click on there select the second fiber and then move it from its center position to the center there okay so we now have the two fibers arranged in the way they should be so this is good okay so there's no problem with that so i could just combine them i call them my laminate zero degree a so we could return all the intersecting boundaries and make that our fiber so this is good okay so what we're going to do is use the same system again so if probably copy um so i'm going to call that my b fiber so it will be exactly the same kind of scenario so the only thing is that i'm going to have to delete that bit so that we don't have that so that means within our assembly module we need to also delete this bit okay and then we'll refresh resume these fibers so the, the only thing I want to do here is I want to make one of the fibers to kind of be on the edge, you know, on the top and the bottom. So what, what we're going to probably do here is let's maybe create some intersections between, you know, maybe the center here and there. So, and then create also another intersection here and maybe create. So basically we want to create artificial points there. So what I'm going to then do now is that I'm going to translate. So we're going to translate, let's say fiber one from wherever it is to that location. Okay, so the advantage of doing this is that we now have just a segment of it appearing at this end. So what we're going to have to do again is, so probably, so i could look at this fiber too and i'll delete it because i'm going to use a different way to create that so i'm going to create a pattern of this fiber okay and i want it to be distributed vertically by a distance of 75 which we know is what we need okay so um so we're obviously going in the y-axis so yes so i've moved it up in the y-axis so now we have one fiber here and the fiber there or oh, we've probably removed the fiber in the middle so we've got that so let's create maybe one more fiber system which is this okay and then i'm going to translate this fiber system which would be number two in this case from the center where it is maybe to the center of the system okay so essentially we if we look at the part instances so we've got a fiber here we've got a fiber there a matrix here and then we've got a fiber here and then we've got this one in the middle so we can then go ahead and call it okay lamina zero zero degree b okay so this will be everything so we connect it good so 
now we've got it but the only problem is that we've got some of it on the other edges so what we're going to do is to have to trim so we select that and basically specify the inside which will be 00, 00 and 22575 so this will be the main main original problem and then bigger one so this now trims it so that we could have the central fiber the other fibers at the top so now these are the systems we have so we've got zero degrees of that we've got this so what we're going to then do is we're going to have to bring them all in okay so if i rename this so i'm going to call it my bd 090 rve okay so this will be my main composite i'm just renaming the one that has the lamina 90 degree with it so what we're going to do now is okay we are going to copy across some of the parts that we already have so this place model copy objects so we want to copy from here which is lamina and the part that we want to copy is this i want to copy it into bd090 and click ok so if you open this then you could see okay now we have the zero degree lamina we've got the 90 degree lamina and then we need to do the same so again file model copy objects so now we want to do that of b copy the parts into bd090 so we've got them all in there so if we delete this because we wouldn't need that so also the glass and the fiber and the polypropylene we don't need them so we just want to have in the window the critical things that are necessary so we can then create so basically we've got this already so create instances for the other two so we've got this we've got that so what we need to do is to move the b into a position so we select the instance which is instance basically b and we want to start it from here to there okay so that gives us the arrangement of the fibers so, so then we need to combine all of them to form our bd090 bd090 rve as a whole so we return all the boundary intersection and select that so that gives us the bd090 so what we then need to do is okay so we already have the materials and the section created from the python script okay so the first thing we need to do is to do a section assignment first for the fiber so you double click here to select the fiber so how do we find the fiber so maybe what we need to do is we need to remove all the places that we think are just the metrics so this will be a matrix this will be a matrix so you press down control so that's the press down shift select so these are all matrices so this will be a matrix and that's a fiber that's a matrix and that's a fiber so click done so that leaves us with the fibers and that so we can then okay go ahead and just select everything okay so we don't want no we don't want them removed so we just want so we select everything and click done so this region has to be made of the a glass okay so now we're going to invert that to leave behind the matrix okay and then we'll click done now we look at polypropylene so we can replace everything so that gives us that and then we can say okay fine i want to see all the materials and make sure that it looks correct and that does look correct then the next thing is to do a mesh of this domain so we select that so i could look at 2.75 so just as a really small mesh for this structure and we want to mesh it using triangles so we can go ahead and mesh the domain so we we sort of have a good result showing all the fibers and everything and the rv in the way it needs to be so the next thing we need to do is to get some corner nodes because we definitely need our corner nodes for applying extracting so i'll press down shift and select all the four corner nodes for this domain click done so that gives me the corner nodes so what we then want to do next is to create a loading step so what a loading step is static general loading step this is fine and then a history output corner node history output so we want our history output to be associated with our corner nodes and we, what we want is rf1 coordinate 1 u1 u2 so then we now need to apply a boundary condition so i'm going to say my x back roller with an initial boundary condition displacement so this will be attached to the back and only on the corner nodes there so and this according to this picture that shows you the boundary condition that we're looking at 
I'm implementing so the same thing y base roller so that will only be attached to this point and that point so and that will be in the y direction and then the final thing is that our load x and that will be obviously a loading step and then that will be attached to this so we're going to look for a 10 percent loading 22.5 because that edge is 225 microns if i just go back to the top here and then i just okay i'm going to rename this and then call it x tens okay so we'll copy the same and create the y tensor case so with the y tensor case everything will be the same but it will follow this kind of loading history so that means instead of having our load x we're going to have our load y okay and in the loading y case it will be moving from this position to the y position and then we're going to have to pick then done so that we've moved the load to this position according to this picture here and it shows you the loading in that case so the final case is the shear case scenario so we copy this model and then we'll go and call this our x y shear so with the shear case scenario the boundary condition again will be different slightly different so we'll probably still need the load in the y direction however the y but however is going to move into the x-axis okay so it's going to be moving in the x-axis so we're going to suppress the two roller systems so we don't need them because again according to this picture it shows that this is sort of loading we are looking for so now what we would have here would be node one fixed so we want to fix node one securely because that's what we expect so this point is fixed and it's going to be fixed in the x and y direction accurately and then we need to introduce load x which is as, an as a loading step so that will be attached to this point so so this will be acting in the y direction so 22.5 okay so we're going to rename these two so it's probably difference so this should be load y y and then this should be load x so i'm just going to rename this again so what we're going to do is then we're going to create the jobs for them okay so we've got all the jobs created here but we're not going to submit it yet because what we want to do is i want to apply periodic boundary condition to it to get it ready so that we can submit so what we need to do is first and foremost is to go back to matlab so this is the other the code that i talked about the second code for automatically imposing periodic boundary condition so we're going to use it so what i'm going to do here is so when you get the hold of the file this is sort of what you will see there will be essentially the main executable here and some readme file and other input files just for examples so what we're going to do is i'm going to copy that link so by right clicking and copy that link and then go to abacus and make where pbcgen is my working directory so i'll go and do set working directory pbcgen where it is located so it becomes my working directory so now that it's become my working directory then i can write the input files write input files for these three models so this means i've created so if we then go to pbcgen you can see that we now have the input files that we want as now input files that we can use pbc gen so what we're going to do is to call pbc gen 2d okay so if i call it the first thing it will ask me is which code am i looking to use which abacus input file so let's work with this three so i'll select this one first so what it will do is i will navigate through it and make sure that it's it's correct and then apply the periodic boundary condition so what you see here is basically the nodal points for the system that we're looking at now the other thing it does is that you find the boundary nodes which we see here all the boundary nodes that you need and then basically some further information we given to us about what is actually done but the key thing is that in the end it creates an updated input file here which means this is a version that has periodic boundary condition implemented on it and then it creates a job folder where that information is so if you open that that's the updated input file with periodic boundary condition incorporated so we're going to run that same code again for the other cases so the other case will be the y tense case so again it goes through the same process again we'll run through that for the shear case as well so we'll run through and implement periodic boundary condition on these cases so we are all done now and then now the next thing we need to do is to run the models okay so run the models but something that we missed which you need to remember is that if you go back to your models okay so 
we did not specify the properties of the fiber. So the E glass, we need to specify its properties as E glass will be 73 e to the power 9 and 0 point, um, 0 0.2. Okay. And the polypropylene, we need to specify the polypropylene as 1.308 e to the power 9 and 0 0.4 elastic properties and the plasticity properties for polypropylene here will be 48 to power 6 and 0, 0.0 so that's the properties for the polypropylene so we we've got that so what we can do is you know for 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 this so this is for this first case at extends out so i'm going to write submit write the input file again okay for that so let me rename it and call it a different name maybe number two so we'll write the input file for that okay and then you can make the changes so for the other cases so uh, so we've got it done for extends so we can just copy it across for so we want to copy from extends to let's say share case and want all the material copied so yes yes to all and then we'll go and do the same for white tens and we want all the material copied yes to all okay so so this should have done it so if we come back here and say okay what is white tens so let's just confirm that everything is working well so yeah the properties are all there okay so what we then need to do is to create so let's rename some of this number two and then the white tens we rename them number two okay so we've got all of them done so what we're going to then do here is to write the input files okay and then write the input files for this other one and write the input file for that okay so if we then go back to this case so we've got those input files and we can then run them again because now we need to have that updated input file data so pbc gen so the x tens case so we've got that so we'll do the same for the y case for number two and then we'll do the same for the share case for yes so we've got the share case is all done so what we're going to then do finally is to open the case so this is the file that we need so i'm going to right click here and rename and click copy so i want to copy that link then exclamation sign apaku's job is equal to the name of the file control v to paste hyphen interactive so this is basically sending the job to run inside abacus and the idea here is that it will run and hopefully it should give us the result that we're looking for of the simulations so we do that for all the three cases both for the tensile extensile wild tensile and zshm and then we'll now go ahead and look at the result inside abacus okay so what we have here now is the simulation result for the extensile case we just animate it so you could see what's happening here so if we switch it to the plastic strain so you could see it shows you a clear region with the fiber dominated section the matrix dominated section and also the fibers so the bd composite at the edges and in the middle here is where you see the fibers so you could see the periodicity at the edge here which shows you this region is periodic the other one's clear will not be periodic because the fiber is dominating it so if you look at the bomb stress okay a lot of the stress is taken by the fibers oriented in that direction so let's go to the next one which is the white tensile case so the white tensile case a similar scenario so you're pulling this in this y direction again the fibers are obviously taking a lot of the loading and as they undergo compression there is a central region where you see the 90 degree fiber so to view that more closely so you could see okay we see that clear picture of what's happening in that region so as this structure is being pulled up so you see that region gray fiber it's sort of like a weak weak zone in this structure because all the other regions are very strong and this is a problem with true thickness testing of bi-directional composite the only kind of composite this usually is a weaker region uh, compared to other regions in the model so the final case is that we want to look at the shear stress case for this and then again you get some interesting results so these are the zero degree fiber laminates and these are the 90 degree fiber laminates so if we look at it in s12 plane so again there's a lot of shear distribution in that zone but what we'll really be interested in is if we look at the plasticity and then it begins to show you some interesting results so again that's the deformation of the model but this 
thick matrix region according to the design of our model it's obviously undergoing a lot of plastic deformation and it's a weak zone in this structure and this is typical when you have a zero degree and 90 degree fiber in that interface where you transition from one zero degree to a 90 degree if there is a lot of metrics in that region then that can create plasticity in a lot of plastic deformation and this is what we see with this kind of result the next thing we need to then do is to extract properties from them so what we're going to do here is if we look at this okay so i'm going to extract properties by clicking on here so my history output what would my history output be so basically all the coordinates i'll select that all these other ones i select everything and then you plot so what this will give you is basically a measure of the stress displacement force and position outputs which shows again a dominant linear elastic response because the system is basically dominated by the fiber so if we do the same for the white and sour case so if we then look at that as well so again i'll pick up all those nodes that we've talked about and you plot them okay so there's a little bit of effect of plasticity you know due to that weakened zone in that and then finally so let's look at the shear case so if we switch to the shear case so and then go through the same process again select all that press down control and shift now select all and plot so we get a bit of shear deformation on the model um, and this happens as soon as you start approaching to the region where the structure is failing so if you want to go from these traces into a stress strain data and more things like this please look in the card here for videos that i've made that shows you how to take this result from a periodic boundary condition enabled domain and get stress strain data from it so this will be something that you will be interesting if you want to learn a bit more about modeling of bi-directional composites in 3d this is a video that I've made that shows you how to do this. And also these are playlists of videos about composite generally. So if you really want to learn about composite, you can go and look at that. Thank you for your interest in this channel and catch you in the next video. Bye-bye.